A hindrance to our lives can be very simply the words we speak, death wishes or negative confessions. You know, life, you know, uh, Proverbs 8, 21, life and death is in the power of our words and our tongue. And some people just speak death all the time. You know, you know, sometimes, you know, like this season that they start to get a sniffle. Oh no, I'm getting the flu. I'm getting, I'm getting, oh boy, but by the end of the day it's gonna end up worse. And they're speaking this over their lives. Well, the flu's going around, it's going to be, you know, I got it last year, this year I'll get it too. I said, we need to declare life. Thank you, Jesus, your blood's over me. I refuse yeah. to accept this in my life. Thank you, Jesus, that you're my healer. Yeah. Some people go to the doctor and they say, you know, you've got this condition, it's incurable. And so then you go around saying to everybody, you know what, I've got this, it's incurable. It's incurable, it's incurable, it's incurable. Your words have power, it's incurable. I tell you what, maybe, maybe, maybe in the natural world it is. But there's a name above cancer, there's a name above, above motor urine disease, a name above fibromyalgia, that's the name of Jesus Christ. And we need to hold a bit of confession. Thank you, Lord, you're my healer. Thank you, God, you died on the cross to me. God, and God, thank you, God, for your healing powers flowing from me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, the best is yet to come. Thank you, God, you're a faithful God. We need to be careful the words we speak. I know you've all heard a thousand times before, but never heard it repeated again, does it really? And then, uh, so this can be a hindrance. Our, the very words we're speaking can hinder us. We're in church and we're going to Bible college and we finish Bible college and we have dreams of starting a ministry and then nothing happens. And you start declaring where it looks like God's forgotten. It looks like nothing's going to happen. We just start declaring, thank you, God, you've called me. Thank you, Lord God. Man, you've got great things in my life. Thank you, God, you're, you're going to use me in a powerful way. We need to keep those words, positive words. Number 10. Another hindrance can be wrong doctrines or belief systems. And uh, some churches teach that Jesus doesn't heal today. And some people believe that Jesus doesn't heal. You know, they need to have their mind renewed. Sometimes we need our minds renewed that Jesus heals. You know, it's very easy even to sit in churches, in the city, sit in meetings and hear healing scriptures. But it's nothing to really believe it. To really, I believe it that Jesus heals. He's my healer. And it comes with a decision to believe. And so we need to have the right belief systems about that. Number 11, I put together a hindrance to healing can be generational curses, Freemasonry, idolatry, false religions, occult drugs, New Age, a whole lot there of things that can be a hindrance to us that might be dealing with, that could be affecting us. You know, when I was, when I was young, I, uh, my family used to do Ouija boards is to call down our spirit, the spirits of our ancestors to help us. And if you knew our ancestors, we were in a pretty bad way because they had you know, conflicts and alcoholics and all sorts of major problems there. And uh, I tell you what, but you know, you know, those things have opened the door to, to the demonic. And sometimes we need to, to repent and God, forgive me for that. Forgive God, God I stand again for my family, forgive us. You open the door to demonic spirits. But despite what curse it is, the Bible says in Galatians 3.13 that Jesus became a curse for us. He took all sin upon himself, all the torment. In my family, we had we had massive problems with alcoholism. And in our, in our family, we actually grew the first beer in the nation's history. And the beer named after it called James Squire Lager. It's got my family history on it. And I've traced my family tree that, that uh, alcoholism and brewing and distilling and all this stuff uh, came all the way through, all the generations, right down to me. And when I was a young Christian, I had a horrible addiction with alcohol and I had a horrible battle with it. So I began drinking when I was 14 in parks and all the drunk all the time. I dropped out of school very young. And, uh, and, and even, as a, even as a young Christian, I battled with alcoholism. And I'd go for all right for a while, then I'd go on a binge, I'd go good for a while, I'd go on a binge, I used to hate myself for it, and, but God always used to help me. And, uh, and one day I got, I got so, well, God made God give me a place where I could actually pour the bottle out of the park. I said, that's enough, that's enough. And for seven years, I suppose they classified me as a dry alcoholic. You know, I wasn't drinking, but I had all the symptoms, I get the, the blood, blood moods, and I get all the, the, the shakes, and I get the desires. And uh, several years I was like that. And one day, praise God, I was in this church and there's a couple had a ministry of deliverance. And they sat me, and the pastor said, you need to talk to this couple. They just sat me down one day in a room. And I had paddled for so many years. And uh, I sat me down, and I was in my late 20s at the stage. 
And all I did was they took, a, they took authority over alcoholic, um, the curse of alcoholism through the generations, and they cast the devils out of my life, and this foul smell came out of me. And I couldn't smell it. And, and the husband had no, he had, a, he had an accident, he lost his sense of smell, but he could smell it. His wife could smell it. It was so bad that they had to leave the room. I sat there and said, man, what's, what's this strange? I left the room. I said, I said this is so bad. But you know, after the cast of death, so I never even had a twinge of desire. God delivered, he delivered me. I said, we need the ministry of deliverance to take authority, to cast out devils. And more than healing, it's cast out devils. I can preach this. Powerful thing. I, I, I love Jesus, but I struggled, I battled. Man, I tried everything. Thank God for people who had a gift on their life to cast out devils, to, to, to deliver me. And so, you know, that could be a hindrance. It's a simple need. You just need somebody to help you to break something off your life and to repent. And so, and so there could be many things that can, that can hinder us. And I want to encourage you in that, in that there's power in the blood of Jesus. And you know, the Word of God brings life. And sometimes when we hear a message like this, the Holy Spirit can speak to us and say, you know what, there's an area in your life that's hindering you from getting your breakthrough. And um, it's very simple, very simple to repent and say, sorry, Jesus. And begin to deal with some areas and maybe there's been some open doors. You know, I've got kind to of see things like open doors in people's hearts. Because sometimes I pray for people and, uh, and nothing's happening. And, uh, and the Holy Spirit will speak to me. That person's got a death wish over their life. They need to repent of that death wish. And God will, God will, will, will reveal that to me. As soon as the person says, God, forgive me for wishing all this death wish. Forgive me for saying, forgive me. And all of a sudden, the power of God comes and delivers them and heals them. He so, this can be a hindrance for us to be set free. It's a powerful thing. Powerful.